God bless football, Billy Gill. God bless football, Mikey A. Eh? God <laughs> bless football, Stu Gatz. He's and doing the are. voice. Yeah, I know he's doing the voice. Here I told him when he talks normally, uh, it's Billy Gill. And when he talks like that and he hates this name, it's Bill Gill. Um, he sounds like a Bill. He sounds like a different person. Why are you doing that? Is that your football voice? No, there's just an issue here in the studio, apparently, that I'm a little low and you can't hear me. So now I'm talking louder and I'm concerned that on the back end, this is all going to be way too loud and peaking. So okay. I don't know if this I... bit is worth playing out. Anyways, lots of football, huh? Yeah, there is. Uh, we'll discuss it with Diana Rossini, a wild free agency period. Austin Eckler, our buddy, who's now with Washington, is going to join us as well. So I'm very excited uh, for that, I'm also excited. Billy, I hate to say this. Mikey, <laughs> you know I hate to say this. The Jets, they haven't won free agency. They've won the last oh. five. But, man, have they had a good free agency period here. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say it's their season, but I feel like it might be their season. <laughs> how does this happen to you every year? Like, how do you keep know. falling for it this? It does, though. <laughs> like, I'm excited. I don't want to yes. be excited for this team, but I am Right. Like, I don't I, want that. I know. I mean, listen, we have a we have a wide receiver who's entering his third year uh, who had back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons. Then we got Mike Williams. Uh, we have a quarterback who's coming back from Achilles. He'll be our quarterback if he doesn't retear the Achilles or run for vice president. Mm. And then the draft is coming up, and everyone is saying we're taking Bowers, the tight end from Georgia. I am excited, Billy. It might be our year. <laughs> I, I I wish you well, uh, but I know what happens. Uh, yeah. And Brees Hall, I left him out. We have Diana Rossini and Austin Eckler on the show today. Is she so she lives in New Jersey, right? She's not a Jets fan, though. Is she isn't her husband like an Eagles fan or something? Well, her husband is certainly an Eagles fan. I believe Diana so she'll tell you she's not a fan of any team know, because she's a reporter. Say, she has yeah, to remain exactly. neutral. But mm-hmm. I believe she grew up a Jet fan. Yes. Yeah. I think so. She did grow up a Jet fan. I don't know yeah. that you still are. I mean, especially how Jet fans hate her because yeah. she said that there's all that strife in the building and she's right. Yep. <laughs> um <laughs> And she's right. Just that like, makes, and that makes Billy happy. No, I just like, you know, they hate her because she told the truth. Yeah. <laughs> the Jets hate her because she told the truth. Billy, we can't handle the truth. Yeah. <laughs> this is your year, though. Don't worry. I feel, I'm feeling good, Billy. Ugh. <laughs> it's impossible to feel any better than I felt last year. But it's close. I'm but it's here. You, it's close. I mean, might be a quarterback away. We'll find out. I don't know. But all the pieces are there. I'm telling you. The Bears, the Bears are the for the first time in 20 years of doing this. I can tell you there is a team that's a quarterback away. It's the Chicago Bears. They have all the other pieces. They actually don't have a quarterback. They have Tyson Bajit, special Bajit. That's what they have. Mm. Well, let's get to uh, Diana. Anyway, Diana yeah. Rossini is going to join us. Austin Eckler is going to join us. Eckler is now uh, is now playing for the Washington Commanders. But Diana Rossini is with The Athletic. She's been all over uh, all the news uh, in regards to free agency. She has great stories. She's a friend. She'll tell us everything next. I want to talk to you about that. In fact, I haven't spoken to you uh, since before the Super Bowl. And I didn't see you at the Super Bowl, Las Vegas, Radio Row, Super Bowl week. I missed you, and I miss you. Uh, but Mikey A and I were just discussing. What did you just put on your lips there? What was that? I put a little lip gloss on because I was shoving um, goldfish uh, in my mouth as a snack. Um, <laughs> my eating habits have changed a lot lately, so I'm, I'm trying to get healthy. Goldfish aren't doing it, but anyways. Because, because of the kids? Yeah, I just eat their food. When's the last time you had, like, you know, an adult meal? Oh, great question. Uh, my husband, Kevin, does cook a lot. So I, I am fortunate that what we do now is we will give the kid food to the kids and then put them to bed. And then we have the adult meal after bedtime. Uh, so we've been doing we've, we've actually had some pretty good meals lately. So I, I really can't complain about the the food in my house. I think it was last August where you left ESPN and you were killing it at The Athletic. And you and I spoke a lot before you made that decision. And so I'm just wondering, as we fast forward here from last August till right now, 
Uh, how are you with your decision? Because you seem to be happy and you seem to be killing it. We spoke a tremendous amount, and I am really so grateful for your friendship during that time because it was such a hard transition for me. Um, going from walking away from ESPN and television to stepping into a medium that I wasn't really certain about. Um, I think unknown is the scariest thing, or at least one of the scariest things in life is yes. just taking a taking a leap and and not being sure of it. Uh and, and then also having to believe in yourself. <laughs> yes. It's bet it's on hard. Your, bet it, on yourself, it, yes. You know, and and you know, you can be told a million things over the course of a career, but you have to truly know what your ability is in your heart. And um, I was relying on you so much during the transition to just for guidance on, on that it was going to be okay. Like you just, it's, it's almost like you had the playbook and the, or like the, the, the answer key that I didn't have. And maybe you didn't, but whatever you were saying to me, was giving me relief and it was it was constant um fear and paranoia right when I when I left ESPN and I remember being at a park and I was with my kids I I was there but I wasn't there you know like you're you're not present because your mind is racing and you just texted me like checking in I'm like oh thank god and I I think I wrote back like 700 words back to you <laughs> meanwhile you're like hey I was I was just looking for a good <laughs> um <laughs> But it, it was a really hard, you really saw me at a, a very, very vulnerable state when all the times that you've been around me and you know me, I think I, I like to think I've been pretty strong and put together. So uh, it feels so good now to be sitting here with you and feeling free of it all. I just scroll through our text conversation over the years and you're right. I just was checking in and you sent me 17 texts back before I responded Hey, just wanted to make sure you're okay. <laughs> like, yeah. you, were, you were in a crazy space back then, man. <laughs> yeah, you knew. Because it 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 just, you keep hearing, it, it's almost like the devil and the angel on your shoulder in yes. these, it, during this time, during that time, because it was the voice of all people do is work in sports to get to ESPN and you're walking away, you're going to sink and regret this and this will be the biggest mistake of your life. And then you had the other voice who was you, which was like, Go do it. Believe in yourself. Feel it out. Try it. Um, and and I did it. And and I mean, I was armed with the proof that you could do it because we had done it and we were doing it for like I think two years before you had to make your decision. So I knew that it was possible. And then I just believe in you and your talents and your ability. So I knew you'd be fine. You don't need ESPN behind you. You just need Diana Rossini behind you. That's all you need. I I, I realize I think by being away from ESPN that. I did learn so much. It was like the it was the best gr training ground in the world to be uh, an NFL reporter and Amazing. to do what, what, yeah. what I'm doing now. Yes. And I obviously got to watch Schefter and Woj and the and the best do it. So to be out doing this now on my own, I, I miss it a lot. Sure. I miss I miss my friends. I miss the people. I yep. miss TV. Sometimes I miss I miss Greeny. I miss. I miss Schefter. I, I miss a, a Darlington and I would go on shows together and just goof off. I miss those little moments, but it's, it's really cool to be back at that park every once in a while. And, and I've, I've noticed it since and been like, man, I remember when I was at this place and I, and I wasn't sure of myself and, and it feels good to, to, to be relieved and, and feel, feel good about it all now. Let me say this the right way, because we all work hard to and and we hope to land at a place like ESPN and ESPN is a fantastic place to work for. And it helped me. It helped build my career. It catapulted both me and Dan to a place where we could do it on our own. So as good of a feeling as it was to get to ESPN, the better feeling is once you've learned from all the great people at ESPN to arrive at a place where you're like, hey, I don't need the four letters anymore. That, to me, was equally as good a feeling as arriving at ESPN in the first place. Maybe a better feeling, Diana. Yeah, and, and it, I think it's if you're if you have the work ethic to do it, because yes. it's not it's not an easy lift. I'd actually argue being at ESPN, you can kick it back a little bit because it's such a mammoth of a place. Yes. And and, and that's not you. You still work hard at ESPN. They put you on every show uh, if you're going to work there. But um, it's a different type of grind now. Um, and, and even making that adjustment has been really hard for me of going from being sort of TV fit 
to now what I'm doing now. And and it, it's a different type of of wear on you. How has your husband been during uh, Super Bowl week, uh, the Indy Combine, free agency? He misses you. What's going on there? Yeah, it's a nightmare. Um, <laughs> it's it doesn't matter that some that your partner understands what you do right. because that's always been the benefit of my marriage. Is I have a husband who completely understands the NFL calendar. He gets free agency. He gets and understands why I have to take phone calls and text messages and stop life at many times throughout the day on a daily basis to weigh in on something or listen to someone uh, in the NFL world to help get my job done. But I just mentioned this to him the other day that I don't understand if you have the knowledge of what is happening here, why you're so mean to me. (laughs) (laughs) Why? What is he doing? We're we're (laughs) we're over it now. He's over it now, right? Because it's like, all right, you're gone for Super Bowl for 11 days. You're gone for senior bowl for five. You're gone for, in Indy for seven days or How about six you days. pitch in, huh? It's like, it, it's like I can't do everything. And it's not like I come back and work overtime, right? right? I just hang out. Like, I just go back to, I just go back on my phone. <laughs> um, but he needles you because, because he loves you, because he cares, right? <laughs> he understands that we can't run this house. Um, alone. Like, you can't do it by yourself, not the way we live. And with the uh, children that we have that, you know, we have a two-year-old and a one-year-old and they're both in the same phase of biting and hitting and and throwing things and, and just they don't do anything right right now because they don't know any better. Um, and then it doesn't help when the stomach bugs going around and you have two kids puking in the middle of the night while I'm at a party in Las Vegas. I mean, there were multiple nights when I was at the Super Bowl right. where I'd call Kev on my walk back to my room, yeah. and he was starting the day in New Jersey. <laughs> right? So think about that. I'm coming in to wash off my makeup to get in my jammies, and he's like getting breakfast ready for the boys to wake them up in 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 a couple of cases in like an hour. <laughs> and you're stumbling home three in the morning, hammered. <laughs> so I wonder why he's pissed. Yeah, go ahead. I I didn't go hard on drinking on right. any of these trips like I used to. Okay. Because I, I just, I can't do it anymore. Right. Sure. You know, it's so difficult to to operate on such little amount of sleep to begin with. I'm already, I'm already behind the ball entering Vegas, right? Because I'm on mom's sleep, which is nothing. Right. So to then lose all that sleep because she, like there was one night PFT and I just got hot on blackjack and roulette. And so we're up a lot of money and I'm looking at my phone and it's like 415. I have a 9 a.m. breakfast with a with a source in the league. Right. And I'm like, I have to walk away. And he's like, you're going to walk right now right. with you. You're you're you don't walk when you're hot. Right. I'm like, I have to go to bed. And he's like, all right. And, and we pulled it. But please, five years ago. Yeah, right. I'm never doing that. All nighter, right? Yeah. No more. Those days are over. Wait, so PFT is right. You cannot walk away from a hot table, especially when you're the one winning all the money. Are you going to tell me how much money you were up or no? Is that? Um, I think at that time it was like 4K. You can't walk away in that spot. Did you call your husband? I, I talked to him about it. <laughs> you did? Okay. So I actually, I did something really cool, I think. All right. So I love to gamble. Love right. it. Okay. It's a horrible thing. It's just my thing. Okay. Um, and PFT knows this too. So every single night in Vegas, we, I don't, I think we had dinner once. He and I, I did not see him at all. He's one of my best friends. Did not see him. Only saw him at the casino late night. That's what we would do. Mm-hmm. Cause he loves to gamble. And I love to gamble. And was like, we were just feeding into each other's disgusting habits. So Kev knows I love to gamble too. So I just never told him when I won. I kept all the money. Just usually, you know, you want to celebrate. You you call, you know, your significant other like, hey, I won this. I kept it quiet. And what I did was I took all the winnings I had in Vegas and I put them in a drawer. And I told him when he got home from work the week I got back to get something from there. And he was like, whoa, what is all this? I said, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you I won all this money. Uh, <laughs> so that was like my way to make up for the fact that I bailed on him for 11 days with two under two, you know? <laughs> that was his paycheck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what she said. For, taking for your care, daddy duty. For, for taking care of his kids. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> what, is, uh, what has surprised you uh, the most through free agency here? Like, has there been a move where you were like, whoa, didn't see that one coming? 
So the Kirk Cousins thing felt, I always thought Minnesota had a shot because I thought the comfort Kirk had with Kevin O'Connell, with that team, with that organization, and his overall happiness being in Minnesota and just reading the tea leaves. I even follow his wife, Julie, on Instagram, and I would just see what she shared, and they just look so happy there. And I just kept putting myself in his shoes of two kids, you know, late 30s. You've made tons of money. You know, m- maybe you just choose a space to to that you're just happy in. Why, why shake it up? Be still. You're still going to make a lot of money. Maybe not that much. Um, so to see that he really went after that structured contract where he was – safe and guaranteed a job essentially in Atlanta for the next three years that it, it surprised me a little bit more than I thought it, I, it, that, that he would do it. Uh, same um, here. It surprised me as well. Uh, Atlanta seemed like a weird, I'm with you. Like you're happy in Minnesota. You have kids, you have a family, you have a life. You don't have to change schools again. You don't have to find a new home. Just stay put. Minnesota's pretty good. You know, I, I went back to, to his wife's page just to watch them like move pack, packing up and moving and, the kids wearing new jerseys already. I, I don't. I guess maybe because he and I have he and I have had this discussion before that we're in very similar stages in our lives in terms of the parenting thing. Mm-hmm. So I guess I was just only looking through that prism, not as a top NFL quarterback um, <laughs> through which, your prism. Yes. Yeah, correct. Which is probably the important ingredient in this whole thing was the whole you know star quarterback, uh, the thing that I lack. I can't so believe Kirk did say, this. I would never fucking do this. Like, what does he oh, think? <laughs> I also think I'm lazy now. Like, I, I, you know how it goes. Like, you, yes. the older you get, it's hard just to have that that spunk to just be like, let's pack it all up and go. Right. And moving sucks. Yeah. I move. I've moved so much in my career. It is the worst. So, I mean, granted, I'm sure they pay a lot of money for a lot of people to help them. Um, unlike me, who just would try to get my brother and brother-in-law to come up to my apartments or out to my apartments wherever I was living and pack me up, um, which I've done that six times. Six. Uh, they let me know about it all the time, about how I always use them as my moving company. Well, of Never paid do. them. Yes. Barely yeah. bought them lunch. <laughs> you should have left them the four grand in their draw. What's the matter with you? <laughs> you're, tell- <laughs> you're telling me. Was there, a, uh, was there a story you thought you had? Uh, that you got scooped. Like, did someone scoop you? Is there a story you thought, this is Rossini's story, I got it, I've got the sources, I've got this story, and then someone swooped in last minute, and that's someone, perhaps Adam Schefter, I don't know. Yes. Um, there, there's, a, there's a lot of them. And you as love you can Schefter, by the voice, way. <laughs> it still pains me. There was a few of them. Every, everyone has them. If you're an insider, everybody has these, where there's like five... And I'll say even for for someone like Schefter, maybe 10 of them. Well, Schefter gets a lot of them, but I'm sure he's got a few too. But I'll give you mine. It actually was right before the start of free agency. And I spoke to some sources in Denver, some sources in Cleveland. And it it just appeared that the trade for Jerry Judy was going to be my story. It, it was lined up. This thing was mine. Right. The graphic was made up. The tweet was written. I was sitting at my kitchen table. My boys were watching Miss Rachel, their favorite show. Everything was perfect. <laughs> it, all I needed was the thumbs up. Right. I got the thumbs up, but I got the thumbs up after I read Schefter's tweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Broncos trade wide receiver Jerry Judy to the Cleveland Browns. Jesus Christ. Okay, so uh, uh, most of us have these stories down from multiple people and the teams usually know you have it. Right. So they knew I had it. The te- Both teams, the people that were in charge knew I had the story uh, and they were comfortable with it. They're like, great. Like when you get it, great. Awesome. You have the right information. Good digging. Great work. Enjoy your little victory lap. So I'm sitting at the kitchen table and I don't, I, I, I mean this, I get, fr- I'm frustrated a lot with, with getting B and, and I'm competitive, sure. but it never gets me. Like I can usually, rec- I'm like one of those athletes that can recover from a mistake or mm-hmm. an error really fast. This one, this one got me. So Kevin's in the kitchen and I said, Jerry Judy was traded. He's like, you got it. I go, no, I didn't get it, Kevin. And I just bang my head on the table like a two-year-old, <laughs> right? Like, you know, when you're just frustrated. Right. And I get up and now I'm dizzy and I'm like, 
shit. Now I have a concussion because I missed a trade. Wait, you banged your head in a literal sense? Like, like not even just that <laughs> cute little thing that you right? do when you're just like, I'm a dummy. Like, I just, I was so right. angry. Right. Because there's also a process in a lot of breaking news where you, I really want to do it the right way. Right. And I like to almost over communicate with people involved. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes it costs you the story right? because I should just shut up and tweet it. Yes. Yes. Um, That's what Schefter does, by the way. I mean, I think Schefter just had a, a bigger source on this. My guess, I did not talk to him about it, but I do know the word around the league from other reporters, not Schefter. Um, they were messaging me like heard that was yours. Heard you got sk- like they even knew it. You was got mine. sheftered. Yes, I got sheftered. <laughs> and I can't you know, I, I can't get mad at him. Um, you love him, Diana. You do. I do. But I don't now. He, he, <laughs> I, I don't. He beat me on that. Right. Um, did he say he anything to you? On- like, did he reach out to you? And be- no, <laughs> no, no. He- Oh, I'm, I'm going to see him in a few days. And okay. I have another bone to pick with him. Oh, great. I uh, He was on Pat McAfee today getting asked the other day. And he was asked about a story I reported. And he didn't even do like the polite. Well, you know, Diana has a lot of good sources and a lot of different places. Yeah. I'm sure her people are telling her that. Right. Here's what my sources are telling me, though. <laughs> oh, no, no. This dude just straight up picks up his phone. And he goes, nah. The Colts and Sneeds, peep. No, nope, no, nope, they're not talking. Nope. No conversation. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm like, Adam, what the hell? Um, he was wrong, by the way. Oh, wow. Huh. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> You're happy about that. Look at that smile. That devilish smile on your face. <laughs> I'm having dinner with him in a few days, though. I can't wait. Oh, so really? Adam's the best to talk about this stuff with because he and I have a really good space of trust with one another. And we're pretty open. So I, I, I'm actually looking forward to laying into him and telling him the story about the trade that I did not get. So that was going to kick off free agency and really put me in a nice position right. of like, all right, right. first trade of, of this window. Let's go. Rossini's yeah. got it. Right. Um. So then I just, that's another thing that um I had to do this time of what was going to be the approach on free agency. Right. So do you go for the little fish knowing that not everyone's going to be on that because they're not paying attention. Do you go for the middle, the middle tier guys and just, try to stack up a lot of of signings, right? So you get like two dozen signings of the middle. Or do you go hard on the big ones, hover mm. the heck out of them, and hope you get one of the big ones? Right. So I, I'm still trying to think about what was the best thing to do. I chose the hover the big ones this year. Okay. Uh, you that did, was my approach. You did Safe a great wide. job. I would say moving forward, just get a flurry out quickly. Like just small ones, medium ones, just get a flurry out, get ahead of the game, and then hone in on the big ones, you know? So it's interesting, though, because the big ones get the traction, though, right? Like nobody cares about the 19th running back that signs with the Rams. Right. But any piece of information I had on her cousin's situation – was insane. It was everywhere. Uh, Saquon Barkley, everywhere. So it's it it's hard to figure out what the right approach is. Um, obviously, any information you get, you're going to put out. Um, but in terms of fishing for stuff and putting that effort in and, and having those conversations with the agents, um, for, for me, the big fish worked this time. So we'll, we'll see if I change it up. Um, Austin, is there anything about the new that makes you nervous? Because people don't like change. Does does something new make you nervous? Uh, nervous. Not nervous. No, I'm not nervous for anything. Um, I know there's going to be an adjustment. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to the adjustment of just trying something new in my life because I've been in, on the West Coast with the Chargers, obviously, for the last seven years. And now kind of going into year eight, hey, there's something new that's on the table and kind of kind of taking it on with like a lot of just forward looking, um, I guess, affirmations for myself, where it's like it's a new opportunity, right, to be back on the field, new organization, new coaches, new culture. Uh, let's try to immerse myself in this and, and take it on as a, what it is. It's a new challenge for me and see if I can see if I can, can make as much as I can with this one as I did with my other.
I was going to say, while well, there's a lot of new there, uh, is there a comfort level there going and, and playing four against Anthony Lynn again? Ooh, comfort is a, is a, you know, you gotta be careful with that word. Um, and, and, uh, in in sports, you never really want to be true too comfortable. And I think what what Coach Lynn did a lot um, was to keep pressure um, on us as players when he was our head coach. And now it's going to be a little bit different because now he's in the room with me, um, and he's not the head coach anymore. Uh, you know, we just caught up briefly um, when I was out there, um, just catching up on on everything that's gone on for the past seven years up to now, um, and just how you kind of turn over, but he still has the same demeanor, still has that same seriousness t- about him um, when he's when he's talking about um, the sport. So I'm looking forward to being in his room, not necessarily being comfortable, but being being pushed. Like I want to be coached, I want, and I know he's going to do that. So it's going to be good. You're going to have Cliff Kingsbury as your offensive coordinator. Was there anything you saw in his system that you really liked that that made you want to go there? His eyes. <laughs> <laughs> his smile. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, well, I mean, he was he was with USC, right? So I, I didn't watch I didn't watch any of USC's tape or anything last year. Um, and obviously, he was with the well, maybe it's not obvious, but he was with the Cardinals as well. Um, and you know, I I was having a discussion with him. You know, we can't talk football or anything like that, but seems like he's he's ready to to push forward and put us try to put us in the best position he possibly can, which is what I'm asking for. Um, and so we'll see what that looks like. Um, and you know, with with Dan. With DQ is what they call him, Dan Quinn over there, you know, coming from from uh, from Dallas and me playing with Kellen last year. I know there was a lot of hurry up um, stuff going in, so maybe I can anticipate a little bit of that um, going in. But just I- I'm excited because even I, I got, uh, you know, Brian Robinson in the room with, with me over there, too, or I guess I'm joining his room, um, depending on how you look at it. Uh, it's your room, Austin. I, I mean... Well, here's the thing. It's all of our room. It's all of our room. But he's been there longer than me. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what the culture is like over there. Uh, but it, we're, we're different. We're very different types of runners, right? He's he's like 6'1", you know, 220 or whatever he is. And, you know, I'm not. Um, I'm my little scat speed, you know. It's, <laughs> so kind of going back to almost like me and the Melvin Gordon punch. So I'm looking forward to see how that dynamic plays out as well. Uh, it's interesting. And by the way, we have a lot to get to here with Austin because Austin's uh, Eckler's Madness is going on, a charity March Madness tournament. I'll be doing a live stream with Austin. I'm very excited about this. I'm getting Billy involved as well. Billy is a college basketball expert, so I'm looking forward to that. And we have a bachelor party to cover. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah we I, do. I, you know, I buried the lead. Let's let's Austin, we'll get back to football. How was the bachelor party? It was great. It was great. So you guys know me, um, and I'm not. Well, maybe you don't know this about me, but I'm not like a big like, mm, 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 like go to the club, like let's let's get rowdy and let's you know <laughs> just get bottle service and do that. Um, so I was out jumping trucks, I was racing Ferraris. Wow, um, we were playing golf. Um, we were doing some different types of experiences, like they have this thing called like blackout dining, where you literally can't see a hand in front of your face, and you like have a dinner. Um, went up to went to the Sphere. Um, and so it was like a, a bunch of events like that that we were, you know, indulging in. So that was that was my weekend or my week. We were joking last week saying that that we knew you were on your bachelor party. And we're like, you know what he's doing is he's in the gym doing supersets and trying to hit PRs with all his friends. Like, that's <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> hey, that would be cool. You know, let's get the Greg together. Let's see how much weight we can lift. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> would it? Would it though? For him, yes. I think so. I think so. <laughs> Wait, but your crew, your brother, <laughs> everyone took good care of you. You had a good time? Yeah, I had a great time. Had a great time. It was my little brother and then one of my best friends. His name's Mark. Um, so it was just the trio, and we were uh, enjoying ourselves out in, out in Vegas. Um, it's crazy. There's so much stuff to do out here right in the backyard. So I think j- jumping the trucks was the most unique thing. Like every time I go, like you see this ramp and you're in this truck. I mean, it's like a, it's like a mid-sized truck. That's got like really big suspensions on it and stuff like that. But when you're going over these ramps, you're flooring it, pedal to the ground, and you can't see like the other side. Like you go into a big dip and you can't see going out. And so every time you get off the ground, like my butthole's like puckering, like, oh, oh <laughs> and then boom, you'd hit and then have to like correct it. Um, and so that was that was very intense. I would recommend it if you haven't tried out in Vegas. Ink was dried on the contract before we went on this adventure, though, correct? <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a good no, it wasn't actually. So, what? Uh, Austin, crazy? What's going on? <laughs> That's just poor planning. Eleven million dollars. Look, look, look they <laughs> they drop these things every day. You know, clearly, you know, there's some risk in living, but um, you know, you got to go out there a little bit and, and try some things. You know, not with eleven million on the line. I mean, wait till that ink drives. You know, <laughs> I mean, what's the matter with you? <laughs> well, we made it through. Made it through. That's you, all that matters. You, yeah. did, you did make it through. Um, how many teams, Austin? Do you know? Are you aware of how many teams? were actually interested in you in, in signing you yeah there was like there was like six um that were like genuinely like interested on the first day um some threw out a number some were like yes we want to talk but we're going after this person first and so it's a huge shuffle man and the first day that we were able to actually have that conversation with teams that you, we saw it you guys saw it, like bang bang the running backs are going like crazy um and so it was like a frenzy of of who can snag, you know, some of our some of our guys going into our second and third contracts. Um, and so there was there was, yeah, like I said, probably like five or six, some that did throw out a number, some that didn't. But the ones that we felt were most interested in the the kind of like the the best fit for as far as, hey, Austin, what, what you want out of your career at this point um, was was Washington. Um, and so ended up uh, ended up working out for herself as well. And then, you know, we ended up plugging the gap over there for him. Austin, we want to get back to Washington, but first you, you mentioned how all the money was being thrown out to all these running backs. And for years, you know, the past few seasons, we've been talking about the running back market is dead. Nobody's paying running backs. What did you make of all the money getting thrown out to all you guys? Yeah. Um, there was some encouraging stuff out there. You know, I, I like to say Quan deal, um, him getting himself in there. Um, I forgot what Josh signed for. Um, but it's it's tough. It it really is tough because like how do you quantify, you know, the 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 impact on the field? Uh I think it's almost skewed a little bit um just because of I I'm really not sure why. Um maybe it's because quarterbacks get paid a lot of money and then we need we need someone that can actually catch them catch the ball um for these guys and get open. And so maybe that there's a little bit more emphasis on, you know, the receiver spot as far as talking skill positions on offense getting paid. Obviously, you know, the the running backs are the least of the amount. Uh, I guess tight ends too. Tight ends are still I, I don't know. That'd be it'd be curious to um compare the running backs and the tight ends. But in my in my experience, tight ends have been a little bit more impactful to – I mean, running backs have been more impactful to the offense um, with the ball in their hands than, than tight ends have. And then same even with, with um, receivers. Like you can have receivers – it's crazy because you can have a receiver, you know, go and catch, you know, 60 balls a year, have, you know, 600 yards, you know, f two, three, four touchdowns and get paid $10 million a year. Um, and it just it just seems skewed when you have your starting running back who's going to touch the ball, you know, 300 times, you know, a year, um, not able to even get close to that or get, or get around that. Um, so obviously you got to you got to put you got to put product on the field. You know, I think Christian has been an advocate of what the position can be, like what the cap is right now anyway in sports. Um, and we're all chasing to, to make as big of an impact as he has. Um but I think he's underpaid too. He should be getting paid yeah. twenty five, you know, million dollars a year. Uh, I think he's getting like seventeen right now. So, and my, that's just these are just my opinions. Um, so it really just comes down to you know what you're valuing. I, I'm clearly biased because I play running back, but just coming out of the lens of trying to you know see why the justification is you're paying a lot of these quarterbacks a lot of money. You want to try to get people that hey you know they can get that can get open that these quarterbacks can throw to. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. It's it's more than I could try to figure out here on this call by myself. <laughs> awesome. Well, understanding it is a business, right? You're also a human. So when you say there was, a, you know, five or six teams that are interested in you, but some of them are like, but we're also interested in this other person. Does any part of you say like, OK, well, like I want to be with someone who wants me, not someone who's kind of waiting around to see if they have to settle for me? Yeah, absolutely. And, and it comes down to the situation that they're trying to fill. Um, you know, the Chargers came to me and kind of told me what they were looking at in their running back, you know, position. And it, it wasn't it wasn't what I can offer as a player. Um, there was so it was, there was a misalignment. So it's like, yeah, they're interested. But how, are you really is is it like am I if all else fails, we'll bring Austin back in type of thing, because I don't want to be in that scenario. And if that's your philosophy of what you're telling me and I don't fit that, I got to go look somewhere else. 
um, which is totally fine. Like no hard feelings. Like you want to go a different direction, but I need to find someone where it's like, Hey, we need someone that is going to be able to fit our role of what we want Austin to be in and what we need right now in our room. And so that's what I was looking for. I was looking for someone who had a back. That's like someone that's solid. That's there um, that I can come in and also compliment and, and we can really bounce this thing off of each other as far as, Hey, our production. Uh, Cause that's what I felt best. And that's what I was looking for. And it ended up being with Washington. And so that's why it, it kind of played itself out because that's what I was looking for. And that's what they were also looking for out of me as well. Austin, at this stage of your career, of your life, uh, two years seems about right for you. Just the way we've kind of gotten to know you. Like you you weren't looking for many, for many more years than that, were you? No, no. I was Right now in my mindset, I take this year, I take it one at a time right now. Like I'm going to give it, if I'm committed, I'm committed to this year. I'm going to give it everything I could potentially give it in this year and then i can't even see as far out as next year yet like right. when that time comes we'll deal with that beast that's a whole different beast let me maximize what i can right now um and you know i'm going into year eight and i've loved playing this game you know do i think i'm gonna frank gore it and get out to 16 i don't know i don't know because i was talking to um um one of my old teammates antonio gates and he was like yep about your time you know i was like ah i'm gonna go like two more years Two more years. And he ended up playing like 16 years, you know, after, <laughs> or I mean, eight more years after that right. of two more years, two more years. So, like I said, I can't make any decisions as far as how long my career is going to be. But I just know I'm locked in for this year as it's upon us. And that's what matters the most. And then we'll deal with next year, next year. Austin, we also know that you are interested in life after football and kind of like the business side. So we were kind of looking when you signed with Washington and said, you know, who's a part owner in Washington. Magic Johnson seems like a good contact for Austin to have. Oh, uh, Billy started here. poking around Austin. to him yet or like, <laughs> is any of that adding up here or am I crazy? Look, I'm always looking to build myself and the team around me and the team's knowledge and my knowledge. So if we have any connections that can help build what we're already doing, um, then I'm, I'm all for that connection to be made. Um, and so I'm sure I'll get to meet him. I have not met him yet. I was literally there, you know, from when we we're recording this yesterday, flew in and out day in, day out just to go sign. Um, so I haven't spent a lot of time out there, but I'm sure I'll, I'll get that opportunity. But yeah. My business side is still up and very much alive, and we have some big things coming here in the future. How much of this did you discuss with your soon-to-be wife? All of it. Um, kind of set some parameters with her. I was like, "Look, if I can't get above, if I can't get above this number, which I'll, I'll you know, keep keep hidden, um, that's probably it. Like, if if there's no value for for Austin there, then I'm willing to walk away because I can create more value for myself outside of the field. Hmm. Um, and you almost even- you almost retired. I didn't necessarily almost retire, but I had, I had a number where, hey, if if there, there was not enough interest to get me to this type of contract, then I would walk away from the game. Because wow. regardless, yeah, you get paid. It's still good money, but you, your body still has to go through it. Like, I'm still going to go through a whole nother year of playing running back in the NFL, which is going to be getting beat down. And then it's, it's like, okay, how much is this actually worth? And can I create more value for myself outside of the field? Um, and luckily, I wasn't even close to that number. Um, so I mean, it wasn't really a question, but we had that conversation. So how much less than 12 million? Like I'm trying to figure out what the number is. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to go there, are you? Look, look, this is, so this is what happened with me when, when I went to my second contract, it was all, it was all, okay. Austin isn't a powerhouse back. You know, th- we got, I got the whole charge organization telling me, okay, like he's not going to be our workhorse because he hasn't done that before. We're going to bring in another back to compliment him. Kind of like what I'm going into right now. And I'm like, yep, that sounds great. That's what I've done for the first three years. And I go over there and start crushing it. And they're trying to find someone to come in and kind of be that complimentary back. But I was able to, you know, earn myself basically all the reps, um, you know? And so it was, it was a situation where now I'm getting compensated as a, as a kind of tandem back with no tandem. Um, so that's where I was really conflicted over there. And that's why over the last few years, it's like, yeah, I definitely should be making more. I'm, I'm 1600 yards a season for whatever it was, two seasons, three seasons. And then all the touchdowns that came with it. Um, now I'm back on the open field, uh, open road. Now I get to choose. I get to see what's out there. I know where I want to be. I know who I am as a player. Now I get to choose. Now I'm like, okay, Washington looks like a great fit for what I'm trying to be as a player and how I can be at my best and how I've been at my best in the past. Um, And so 
that's where, you know, kind of fell into this situation too. And the money was there as well. And they were looking for the same type of um, same type of role for me, which makes sense because they have Anthony Lynn there who's seen me in that role, you know, in that, in that space as well. So kind of all fell into how I, I was expecting it to. Austin, it looks like you're going to be working with another rookie quarterback this year, and you can tell us who that is uh, in a minute. But uh, <laughs> what did you learn? Uh, you could. I mean, we're assuming Caleb goes number one, so you could tell us who you guys are going to take it to. But um, you could tell us what what did you learn from working with Justin when he was a rookie that you could sort of bring to whoever they bring in, which you'll tell us who that is. Ooh, it's. I think it's so different. All the, like just working with rookies in general, they're all so different. Um, not even just the quarterback position. Quarterbacks are different in their own way too because they have to, you know, run and step into a leadership role immediately, and everyone's looking at you to make the plays and, and lead us um, on the field. Even though you got guys that are, you know, sometimes ten years older than you, you know, that you're playing and have been playing for a long time, and now you got to go tell these guys, hey, I need you to line up here and run this route, and hey, I need you to be shorter. And you're almost coaching them in a way, and so that's going to be a bridge that whoever our quarterback is going to have to come in, and depending on you know what they've done in the past, they're going to have to step into that and and get comfortable in that. And I think it's important as a as a player, especially as a vet, is to like invite that. Like ask, ask for that, like help pull it out of him. You know, hey, did you like me on that route? Even if it was a good route, like just having that conversation so he gets used to that dialogue of, oh, I can talk to these guys. I can be open with them. Like they're not going to feel offended if I'm like, hey, now I actually want you a little bit further over or shorter or whatever it is. So um, that's going to be important. And, you know, I'll, I'll continue to to lead by example and be that person who's who's trying to help whoever's in that role, uh, you know, just be the best version of themselves because it's going to help the entire team. So yeah, looking forward to to seeing whoever it is. Austin, it's laugh out loud funny that Fowler is now a teammate of yours. I mean, mm. <laughs> the guy who punched, who? the guy who punched you in the helmet on Monday Night Football. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, see, I didn't even know. I didn't even... You didn't yeah, know? You know who your teammate is? How hard did he team? hit you? <laughs> <laughs> see, p- people remember that stuff. I forget that stuff. Right. You know I mean? Yes. Yes. <laughs> that is hilarious. That it. That's who it was. See, I didn't know that. I would introduce known yourself that. I to him. That. I mean. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go, yeah, I'm gonna have to go uh you know see what's going on, see if we're good, or if we still got bad blood or what. <laughs> so can't so, have bad blood for me. I was trying to get my guy out of there. I, I don't know right, what the hell exactly. even happened or who right. said he what. Still hit you. Listen, he's the kind of <laughs> yeah. guy you want on your side. He's on your side now, okay? <laughs> he's on your yeah. team now. You're good. Okay. Tell him to go punch someone else. Uh Billy was thinking business with Magic Johnson. I actually heard Washington, and I don't think this is where you want to go post playing career, but I was actually thinking uh, politics, perhaps. I don't know. Is I, is that mm. is that an avenue you Look, would explore or no? Like Aaron Rodgers? Don't do it, Austin. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No. That's cool. You're that too good a person. Him. Don't do it. You're don't too good a person. Austin. Don't do it. You're too good. Yeah. Look, I, I like to build things, and when I'm in politics, you know, I almost have too much restriction on my back because I have to do as, you know, I'm representing. It's not just like how I'm feeling um, in the time. And so, um, yeah, I think I'm going to stay away from the politics and stay kind of in the open, in the open world where I can build, you know, whatever I please. All right. We're very happy for you. We'll get to March Madness in just a second. We'll get you out of here in just a second. Can I ask you, like, if I name a team, will you tell me if that team was interested or no? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I don't think it's, yeah, as, as far as those details, that's fine. Ravens? Yes. Uh, Chiefs? I don't. Get, I didn't get any word from them. I okay. don't remember. Uh, the Jets? No, I don't think so. Okay. Packers? Yes. Raiders? No. Okay. Interesting. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> really? <laughs> you seem bitter. <laughs> there was a little bit there, but it was like, okay, look, they lost Jacobs, and then they kind of went silent. Did they? Did, I don't think they even brought it. They haven't brought anyone else yet, have they? I don't think so. Um, so uh, maybe they like someone in the draft. I don't know. Wow. So I, I don't think that's just an Austin Eckler thing. I think that's just an in general thing. How about the Eagles? No. No. I think they signed. They signed right away. I would say Raiders brought in Madison. Oh yeah. Oh, did they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Lamar Jackson with Derrick Henry doesn't seem fair. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you seem to. Hey, it's it's going to be exciting for football. I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad it happened. I'm glad I don't play defense and don't play against play against them. Um, you know, in the division. Uh, but hey, someone's going to have to stop them. They're they're all, they're still human, right? Though they might be dynamic and uh, you know and do really good at what they what they're able to do. They're yeah. still human. So all right, all good. 
Eckler's Madness, a charity March Madness tournament. I think it's a $50 buy-in. All the proceeds are going to Austin's Foundation, which is fantastic. We are doing a live stream after the Sweet 16 or the Elite 8 together. I'm very excited for that. But tell yes. people about the uh, the NCAA tournament, and then I have a quick follow-up for you after you're done promoting this. Yeah, absolutely. So if you guys want to get involved, as we know, March Madness is a wild time just for all the brackets and everyone's watching and it's kind of like the pinnacle, you know, moment for college basketball. Um, you know, why we don't have fantasy football going on right now is like the next best thing, you know, for for a brief po- moment anyway. Um, and so we thought a great idea would be to do a charity event for it for my foundation. Quick blur about my foundation. We put tangible resources back into the community, washers and dryers, weight rooms, backpacks, things that people can actually use that are going to help better their lives in the future. So would love to have you involved. Um, you can check it out at Eckler Foundation. Uh, they asked me if I wanted to be involved. I said anything for Austin. I then asked Billy if he wanted to be involved. His response, anything for Austin. I mean, because we love oh, you. Oh, my guys. My yeah. guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> we didn't ask Mike I also e. have to give you guys props. <laughs> I have to give you guys props, though, because I was in Washington yesterday walking through the airport. Yeah. And uh, someone came up to me and they're like, oh, I see you on God Bless Football. <laughs> oh, and my so, God. And uh, so they're all, they're all over. You got the fan. They're everywhere. The fans are all over. That's not the first time. That's happened a few times. So yeah. I appreciate the, the respect that you guys and the community has uh, out there. So appreciate y'all listening out there. Uh, that's very nice of you to say, to share that with us. Uh, how does March Madness look for you? Like Thursday and Friday, are you like the rest of us just sitting around <laughs> eating food, drinking beers and, and, and watching games all day? Well, yeah, there's so many games. So I'm always like, I don't keep up with like college football or college um, basketball during the season. So it's like, okay, like who did I have there? I got to go back and I have like seven different brackets too. So, and everything is tracked for you. So I just go back and I have to click through my links of like, okay, which one's doing, which one's doing well, which one's not. Um, So that's how, yeah, my couple of couple of weeks will be here. All right, man. Well, uh, we appreciate it. I'll be there with you doing a live stream after the uh, Sweet 16 or Elite Eight. So, uh, And I'm happy awesome. to do it. And I'm looking forward to doing it with you. And Billy is as well. So uh, congratulations on the new team, the new city. Uh, a lot of new things happen in your life, man. Uh, you're about yes. to get married. What a crazy time for you. Woo! Austin it's, it's a wild year. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> hey, we just keep pushing forward and hopefully uh, more to come. All right. Well, listen, if 11 to $12 million is not there on the next contract, full-time gig right here. God bless football, okay? I appreciate it, man. Right. I appreciate you guys. Right. I don't know what the number is, but we'll figure it out, okay? <laughs> All right. I'm still waiting for that uh, best man speech, too, by the way. So I'm just Yeah. Putting... What is the actual <laughs> wedding date? Hold on a second. What is the wedding date? <laughs> May 25th. Okay. Uh, I will deliver it the week of the wedding, okay? Right, right, right. right. Okay. He'll, he'll be busy that week. <laughs> <laughs> How about Austin, huh? How about him? I feel like... I feel like he lied to us a little bit. Do you really? I, I was going to say. I, oh, he yeah. said it was going to be West Coast. He couldn't handle going to the East Coast. Sure enough, he, he, he's on the East Coast. Um, I feel like he lied to us. On the front end, maybe he was not as honest. Or also things didn't play out the way he wanted them to. But I feel like he was pretty open with us about exactly how free agency went. More so than I was anticipating, if I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I thought we were just going to be like, yeah, you know, there were some teams or whatever. But telling us which teams wanted him, which teams didn't want him. Yeah. Yeah, no, I thought he was very good. Uh, you felt like he lied to you. Like, he has no idea headed into free agency what teams are actually going to be interested. You could tell he was disappointed the Las Vegas Raiders were not, you know? Yeah, sure. No, nobody contacts anybody until it's the illegal tampering period. No one ever talks to anybody yeah, until that happens, that's true. right? No, I know, but his options <laughs> seemed like they were, they were mostly cold-weather options, uh, it seemed like to me. Right. Well, it's not even cold weather. He said West Coast or at least, you know, left of center. But I do think there is something about Magic Johnson being a part of the ownership of the Washington Commanders that helped attract Austin Eckler because uh, having gotten to know him as we have over the last couple of years, we know that guy is constantly thinking about his post football career uh, because he knows his days are numbered. He plays a position where 30 years old is very old in that league. Uh, unless you're Raheem Moster. And so uh, I do believe there is something uh, to what Billy asked him about Magic Johnson. I would say the counterpoint would be every team has owners and minority owners that are extremely rich and successful at business. So no matter where he goes, he could have found no, 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 but, some people. No, Billy, you're right. But this is a guy who played yeah. a sport in Magic at a very high level and had a great career uh 
you know, post playing career in the world of business. And I don't think a lot of people expected that when Magic retired. And I think Austin could learn a lot from Magic Johnson about making that transition. That's all I'm saying. So I think Austin is very thoughtful. He's very reasonable. He's very responsible. Jumping trucks on your bachelor party before you sign that deal is insane. Not a good idea <laughs> yeah. when you have $11 million on the line. That's insane. Respectfully. <laughs> Crazy, yes. but that's his kind of bachelor party. Like Austin's not the kind of guy going to a strip club and getting hammered till five in the morning. We no. know that he's not doing that. That's not what he does. Yeah, max reps and jumping trucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs>